Welcome to Disney's The Lion King Stories. If you would like to read The Lion King, please press the blue square. If you would like to read The Lion King 2, Simba's Pride, please press the yellow star. To have the story read to you, press the blue square. To read the words yourself, press the yellow star. Press the colored buttons anytime during the story to see some fun surprises. To turn the page, just press the green arrow buttons. The hot African sun rose on an amazing sight. Giraffes, zebras, elephants, and animals of all kinds were gathered at Pride Rock. This was an important day. King Mufasa and Queen Sarabi watched as Rafiki, the wise baboon, presented their newborn son to the kingdom. The animals cheered and bowed before Prince Simba. But one family member did not attend the celebration. Mufasa's brother, Scar. Scar was angry that he was no longer next in line to be king. Mufasa and his assistant Zazu went to ask Scar why he had missed the presentation of Simba. Oh, it must have slipped my mind. Scar sneered, and he walked away. Simba grew into a playful and curious cub. Early one morning, Mufasa brought Simba to the top of Pride Rock. Everything the light touches is our kingdom, he told his son. One day, the sun will set on my time here and will rise with you as the new king. Wow, cried Simba. But what about that shadowy place? That's beyond our borders. You must never go there, Simba, said Mufasa sternly. But I thought a king could do whatever he wants said Simba. Mufasa explained. There's more to being king than getting your way all the time. You need to respect all creatures. We are all connected in the great circle of life. Simba tried to listen, but he was busy chasing grasshoppers and practicing his pounce. <laughs> Just then, Zazu arrived with important news. Hyenas had crossed into the Pride Lands. Mufasa ordered Zazu to take Simba home and ran off to battle the hyenas. I never get to go anywhere, Simba complained.
Back at home, Simba went to see his uncle Scar. My dad just showed me the whole kingdom, the cub bragged. And I'm gonna rule it all. Did he show you that place beyond the border? Asked Scar slyly. Only the bravest lions would dare go to an elephant graveyard. Simba didn't see his uncle's evil trap. He decided to show his father what a brave cub he could be. Simba set out to find his best friend, Nala. She was lying with their mothers on a rock nearby. Mom, can Nala and I go to this great place near the waterhole? Fibbed Simba. As long as Zazu goes with you, answered Sarabi. We've got to ditch Zazu, Simba whispered to Nala. We're really going to an elephant graveyard. Simba and Nala laughed as they ran in and out of animal herds to escape from Zazu. We lost him, cried Nala. Together they played, tumbling and rolling. With a thump, they landed next to a huge elephant skull. Zazu caught up with them, but it was too late. Banzai, Shinzi, and Ed, three drooling hyenas with sharp teeth, surrounded them. The hyenas grabbed Zazu first. Why don't you pick on somebody your own size, shouted Simba. Then one tried to catch Nala, but Simba swiped his claws across the hyena's cheek. Suddenly, a tremendous roar shook the ground. It was Mufasa. His giant paw struck one of the hyenas as he growled, If you ever come near my son again, the hyenas ran away before he could finish. Mufasa scolded his son on the way home. You deliberately disobeyed me, Simba. I was just trying to be brave like you, Dad, said Simba softly. Being brave doesn't mean you go looking for trouble, replied Mufasa. Then Mufasa told Simba how the kings of the past looked down on them from the stars above. They will always be there to guide you, and so will I. Scar was angry when the hyenas told him that Simba had escaped. But he quickly came up with a new plan to get rid of Simba and his father. I will be king, he cried. The next day, Scar found Simba. 
Your father has a marvelous surprise for you, he said. Scar led Simba down a steep gorge and told him to wait there. Then Scar signaled the hyenas to frighten a herd of wildebeests. The panicked animal stampeded right towards Simba. Hearing the thunder of hooves, Mufasa looked into the gorge and saw his son. He leaped down and saved Simba's life. Simba was safe, but Mufasa was still in danger. As he tried to climb away from the stampede, the rocks crumbled beneath him. Struggling up the cliff, Mufasa saw Scar. Brother, help me, he cried. Scar dug his sharp claws into Mufasa's paws and whispered, Long live the king. Then Scar let Mufasa go, and he disappeared beneath the herd below. Simba had seen only that his father had fallen. When the stampede was gone, Simba ran to Mufasa. He tried to wake him. But the Lion King was dead. Help! cried Simba. Scar came to Simba's side. If it weren't for you, he said, your father would still be alive. Run away, Simba, and never return. Heartbroken, poor Simba ran away as fast as he could. Scar sent the hyenas out to kill Simba, but the cub escaped from them once more. Scar was certain that Simba was dead. He went back to Pride Rock and told everyone the news. It is with a heavy heart he lied, that I become your new king. Everyone in the Pride Lands mourned for their beloved king and Simba. Meanwhile, Simba was far away from the Pride Lands. The ground turned dry and cracked beneath him. The hot sun beat down as vultures circled above his head. Exhausted and unable to go any farther, Simba slumped to the ground. After a long while, Simba awoke. Everything around him looked different. There were trees and grass and flowers instead of desert. 
a meerkat named Timon and a warthog named Pumbaa had brought him to their home. You nearly died, said Pumbaa. We saved you, cried Timon. Thanking them, Simba stood up and started to leave. Pumba asked Simba where he was from, but Simba didn't want to answer. I did something terrible, but I don't want to talk about it. You gotta put your past behind you, kid, said Timon. No past, no future, no worries. Hakuna Matata. Simba decided to stay with his new friends. <laughs> Years passed, and Simba grew into a young lion. One night, while looking up at the stars, Simba remembered his father's words. Somebody once told me that the great kings of the past are up there, watching over us, he said to his friends. The next day, Pumbaa was chasing a bug when a fierce lioness sprang at him from the tall grass. He screamed and ran away, but got caught beneath a fallen tree. She's gonna eat me, he squealed. Simba heard his friends' cries and rushed to help. Simba wrestled with the lioness, but then realized she was his old friend Nala. You're alive, she said happily. And that means you're the king. Nala told Simba how Scar had destroyed the Pride Lands. Simba, if you don't do something, everyone will starve. I can't go back said Simba angrily, and he turned and walked away. Simba thought about what Nala had said. I can't go back, he said to himself. It won't change anything. Just then, Simba heard a chanting song from the jungle. Rafiki the baboon came walking toward him. If you want to see your father again, look down there, Rafiki said, pointing into the pool of water next to them. Simba saw the face of his father staring back at him. You see, said Rafiki, he lives in you. Now Simba looked up and saw his father's face in the stars, and heard his voice. Look inside yourself, Simba. Remember who you are. You are my son, and the one true king. The next morning, Rafiki found Nala, Timon, and Pumbaa. He told them that Simba had returned to the Pride Lands. He's gone back to challenge Scar, cheered Nala. When Simba reached the Pride Lands, he was saddened by what he saw. His homeland that was once green and beautiful 
had turned barren under Scar's rule. Bravely, Simba continued on his journey. When Simba arrived at Pride Rock, he let out a roar that shook the earth. Scar was surprised and frightened. He thought the hyenas had killed Simba long ago. This is my kingdom, shouted Simba. Step down, Scar. Scar ordered his hyenas to attack. They surrounded Simba and drove him to the edge of a cliff. Simba grabbed onto the rocks with his claws as Scar stood above him. That's just the way your father looked before he died snarled Scar. Then, Simba realized that it had been Scar who killed his father. With new strength, Simba lunged onto the rock and attacked. At that moment, Nala, Timon, and Pumbaa arrived, and a battle broke out on Pride Rock. This time, Simba trapped Scar at the steep edge of Pride Rock. Sparing his life, he ordered his uncle to run away and never return. Scar pretended to leave, but then turned and lunged at Simba. Simba swiped at Scar, causing him to fall to the hyenas below. Scar was never heard from again. Simba took his rightful place as the Lion King, and once more, the land flourished. Soon, all the animals gathered at Pride Rock to celebrate the birth of Simba and Nala's cub. The circle of life would continue. Welcome to Disney's The Lion King Stories. If you would like to read The Lion King, please press the blue square. If you would like to read The Lion King 2, Simba's Pride, to have the story read to you, press the blue square. Press the colored buttons anytime during the story to see some fun surprises. To turn the page, just press the green arrow buttons. King Simba and Queen Nala had a new baby. It is a girl, announced Rafiki. The Lion King's wise advisor held up the new princess Kiara for all the animals to see. Simba and Nala looked on proudly. They were thrilled with their new daughter. So were their good friends, Timon, Pumbaa, and Zazu. 
all the animals of the Pride Lands bowed to the royal family. As Kiara grew, she loved to explore, but Simba was worried about her safety. Stay inside of Pride Rock, he warned her, and stay away from the Outlands. Simba asked Timon and Pumbaa to secretly keep an eye on Kiara whenever she wandered off. But one day, Kiara discovered that she was being followed. She was absolutely furious. <sighs> Kiara waited until Timon and Pumbaa were busy eating grubs. Then she sneaked off alone. Bounding along the banks of a swampy river, Kiara ran, wham, right into another cub. He was an outsider, an enemy of the Pride Lands. The two cubs snarled fiercely at one another. But they didn't have time to fight. Suddenly, a nearby log opened its mouth wide. It was no log. It was a hungry crocodile. In fact, the cubs were surrounded by hungry crocodiles. Ah! screamed Kovu, the outsider cub. Run! shouted Kiara. This way! Kiara managed to escape, but Kovu was trapped. Then, just as one of the crocodiles was about to snap Kovu in its jaws, Kiara leaped on the crocodile's head, slamming its mouth shut. The two cubs ran up a tree to safety. They looked at each other in amazement. I did it, Kiara exclaimed, as she realized she could take care of herself. You were really brave, Kiara said to Kovu. You were pretty brave too, Kovu replied. Then the cubs started a game of tag. But their innocent game was soon interrupted when Simba leaped into the clearing to protect his daughter. Moments later, Kobu's mother, Zira, did the same thing for her son. Zira had once been a follower of the evil lion, Scar, who had tried to take over the Pride Lands. Now Zira faced Simba. Scar chose Kovu to follow in his paw prints and become the rightful king of the Pride Lands, she told Simba. You haven't seen the last of us. Simba walked Kiara back to Pride Rock. You have to be more careful, he scolded her gently. I love you and I don't want anything bad to happen to you. But it's more than that. As future queen of the Pride Lands, you must carry on in my place. Remember, you are part of the great circle of life. Back 
in the Outlands, Zira scolded at Kovu for playing with Kiara. She didn't seem so bad, Kovu told Zira. I thought we could be friends. Friends, said Zira. She thought for a moment. That's it. That's how we'll beat Simba and take over the Pride Lands. We'll get to Simba through his daughter. Kiara and Kovu did not meet again for many years. As Kovu grew bigger and stronger, Zira tried to teach him to be like Scar. She watched and waited for a chance to take over the Pride Lands. At Pride Rock, Kiara had also grown bigger and stronger. Finally, the time came for her first hunt. All by herself, she headed toward the plains. At last, Zira saw her chance. She sent some of the outsiders into the tall grass with burning sticks. Soon, the grass all around Kiara was on fire. She was trapped. Suddenly, a handsome young lion bravely made his way through the smoke and flames and carried Kiara to safety. The young lions looked at each other. Kovu, said Kiara, recognizing her childhood playmate. Just then, Simba arrived. I humbly ask to join your pride, Kovu said to him. And so, Kovu came to stay at Pride Rock, just as Zira had planned. But instead of killing Simba, Kovu learned the ways of the Pride Landers. He spent hours with Kiara, teaching her how to hunt. In return, Kiara showed Kovu how to have fun. Soon, Kovu and Kiara fell in love. That had not been part of Zira's plan. Simba liked Kovu and hoped the young lion would decide to stay with the Pride Landers for the rest of his life. Then, one day, as Simba and Kovu walked the Pride Lands, Zira and the Outsiders took them by surprise. Well done, Kovu, Zira said to her son. You led King Simba out here alone, just like we always planned. You? cried Simba, looking at Kovu. But... There was no time for Kovu to explain, for just then, the Outsiders attacked. Outnumbered, Simba had to fight for his life. Simba tumbled into a ravine followed by Zira's fierce lions. Racing through the narrow gorge, he dodged rocks and logs. Suddenly, he reached a dead end. A pile of logs blocked his path. 
Simba tried to climb over the logs, but they shifted underneath him. As the outsiders closed in, the pile came crashing down. At the last moment, Simba leaped to safety. The chase was over. With the help of Kiara, Sazu, Timon, and Pumbaa, the injured Simba made his way back to Pride Rock. All the Pride Landers were very worried about their wounded king. Kovu followed, hoping to be taken back into the Pride. You don't belong here, said an angry Simba. Go! But Kiara could not believe that Kovu would trick Simba. So she followed Kovu into the wild. Let's run away and start a pride of our own, Kovu said to her. If we do that, there will never be peace between our prides, said Kiara. No, we have to go back. As Kovu and Kiara headed home, the Pridelanders and the Outsiders were meeting in one last great battle. Attack! Zira screamed. She leaped at Simba, and the two began to fight. But when the two young lions appeared, the battle came to a halt. Daddy! This has to stop! Kiara shouted. We are all a part of the circle of life. Both the Pride Landers and the Outsiders knew that Kiara spoke the truth. Only Zira refused to accept Kiara's wisdom. And now that the other Outsiders had turned against her, Zira had no place to go. Enraged, she lunged at Kiara, and they both plunged into a ravine. Kiara survived, but Zira was never seen again. Finally, the hatred had come to an end. The Outsiders joined the Pride Landers and took their rightful place in the circle of life. And in the proudest place of all sat Kobu and Kiara, together at last. The end. Welcome to Disney's The Lion King Stories. If you would like to read The Lion King, 